Before we get started today, I wanted to remind you guys that on April 1st, uh, this Monday, uh, as of the airing of this interview, the second Nordic Sound Journal will be live on the Nordic Sound Channel's Patreon, linked in the description. This downloadable Nordic music newsletter will be including essays and columns by me, news, current events, and of course, new music reviews. But if you don't have the means to support me on Patreon uh, and don't want to miss out on the new music reviews, don't sweat it. I've got you covered over on Medium, also linked in the description, where you can find a free version of the journal with just the album reviews if you do rely on the Nordic Sound channel for your new Nordic music fix. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming the incredible Lindy Fihela onto the channel for the very first time to talk about her group De Farna, their new album Islet, and her love of synths and the sea. <laughs> And welcome back to the Nordic Sound channel. As always, I am your host, Jameson Foster. And today we have such a special guest with us, beloved Norwegian singer, Lindy Fehela. Lindy, it is so great to finally have you. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, Foster. I'm happy to be also with you. Yeah, much anticipated. I've been I've been waiting to have you on forever now. Um, so while the, the main event today is, of course, going to be talking about your new album, Islet, um, I am just as interested in the journey as I am the destination. So I would love to hear um, as far back as you can remember uh, your background with music. Do you remember your earliest experience with music that sort of set you on this career? Yeah, yeah, I, I do remember that uh, I always like to move around to music. So my yeah. earliest memory of music is... Uh, when I was walking, or because it was so cold where we were living in the a very old house where I grew up, and be, and uh, it wasn't isolated when I was like before I was like maybe seven, six, mm. seven years old. So what I did uh, that I actually remember I was probably like three, four years old, and I was walking around this uh, uh, what do you call a heater that st stood in the middle of the room. Okay. And I was listening to music because it was always music in the house or something. So I was walking around and around and around. And um, I had that activity. I did it every day. <laughs> that I remember because it's like I had so much joy listening to music. Mm -hmm. uh, that I can still remember it, although it's so long. So I think I was daydreaming or whatever. But I <laughs> I, I was totally like moving around to music, but but just in circles. So it probably looked very peculiar. But that's my early, <laughs> earliest memories. So, and then I, mean, I also did this. Hmm? I, I mean, we can already tell that, you know, for anyone who's seen you live with Varjuna, you are never stand. I mean, very rarely are <laughs> you standing still. And it's always such a huge part of seeing you guys play. Yes, probably. It, it Probably because of that, you know, I've always moved around the music. I can't stand still. It's impossible yep. for me. I'm I'm the same way. I have a lot of trouble <laughs> sitting still. So we are we are one and the same. Um, yeah, it's good to not. It's good not to not sit still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. one of those. You know, I would whenever I would go to like a, a symphony or something. Uh, you know, you're not allowed to move that much, but I would be doing what I could in that little box that you're allowed to sit in, listening. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. When I have yeah. to, I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after so, after these earlier experiences with with music, do you do you remember like who sort of the first bands were or first musicians that you would listen to that sort of started to wire your brain musically? Yes, yes. I had this uh, actually Greek, you know, Vangelis. Uh, I mm -hmm. also had uh, you know the synth guy, um, and I had uh, also. I remember still from the eight, late seventies that must have been Bunny M. Okay. I remember, <laughs> yes. And I was like, yeah. Uh, and the Deepesh Mode was my first like, wow, what is this? Yeah. That's, that 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 I can remember the exact moment I heard because it was. Uh, I've never I had never heard anything like that before. Yeah. And it was like, I was sitting. I was actually sitting in a car, like eight years old. Mm -hmm. 
And it's very weird because I can ex uh, I can really remember the exact moment. It was this boring, usual road we were driving on, and then it was uh, it was this uh, from the Black Celebration album it was played okay. in the car. Mm. Oh, that is and so it, cool. Uh, yes, and uh, it, yeah, the song was "It's a Question of Time." Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then then stripped was at that it was the question of time, and stripped was on that. Uh, I think it was actually a cassette with yeah yeah they had a cassette with all the songs on, but different songs. But then you had stripped and uh, question of time, and that was like yay. So um, that is so cool that you like, you can put yourself back in that moment. I just feel like so many musicians have that very same experience where like we remember. You know, there's the joke that, you know, there's that moment where just kids come online where all of a sudden they have consciousness. And I feel like musicians yeah. are the same way with the music we listen to. For me, it was Metallica. I remember the very first time I ever heard Ride the Lightning and I was like, this, this is my life now. And I still remember vividly, right? Um, yeah, it's, vividly, so it's, that's... Uh, it's good to hear that others also has it that way because, uh, like... Uh, I'm not good in remembering other things, but right. <laughs> the music, yeah, <laughs> like very not good enough actually. But the music, yeah, yeah. So you I, also, I was just showing Alyssa, uh, my wife. Um, she she was never allowed to listen to heavy metal growing up. Uh, it was it was that kind of household. Oh. So I remember oh. um, it was actually just the other day because you know we were listening to the Ride the Lightning vinyl I have, um, and I suddenly remembered like seeing a video on YouTube because I grew up with YouTube, you know, like it was just, that was what we watched in our free time. Um, mm. And there's this very specific video of, of their bassist Cliff Burton doing this solo before for whom the bell tolls. And that was the video that made me pick up the bass for the first time. So I was like, I want to be just like that guy. And I remember yeah. I, sh I showed Alyssa that video and she looks over me and she was like, a lot of things are starting to make a lot of sense about you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's uh, it's uh, it's so great that music can do that. Or you you just mm -hmm. saw a video and that yes, that's I'm I'm going to do that, and then you're doing it. It's like amazing how yeah music and and stuff can work and arts in general. Mm -hmm. And that was Depeche how Mode for you. Huh? And that was Depeche Mode for you. Yes, yeah. it was. So I got my actually because. Uh, I was playing the piano at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, but we didn't have a piano. But my grandmother had this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, with rhythm box and this or this uh, harmonica, yeah. this, this thing. So I was playing on that. But just because uh, the music teacher told my father, you know, she 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 really should get the piano, mm -hmm. and then I talked him into, and I'm so happy that he was okay. Then I can. You can have a synthesizer instead, just because <laughs> the 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 <laughs> the music teacher had been actually calling him and make some pressure to get me this piano, mm -hmm. and I'm like, a oh, synthesizer, and I and we went to <laughs> went to town, and I got this really really great uh, Italian synth called Bit uh, Nittini Bit Ninety Nine. Okay, and I still have it. I still have it. Oh, that is it's, so awesome! And and how lucky yes. you are to have a music teacher that that cared so much. You know, I I have been thinking about her a lot because I don't know her name actually. I don't remember her name. Okay, but she was so that was such a good move. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really appreciate that it exists. People like that, I would never get that synthesizer if it wasn't for her. Then I would still be on the harmonica, you know. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but she made an effort. That was mm -hmm. before internet and everything. She she mm -hmm. didn't write a mail. She called him, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Back in the days when people had phones in their homes that you would call, yes. the whole house yeah. would ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, that so. is so cool. So, so was that was there something in particular about Depeche Mode? Uh, the the reason I'm asking is because I can hear a lot of it in the music that you do now. Um, yes. and so I'm, I'm very curious about what stood out to you about Depeche Mode in particular, or was just everything? No, it was in particular, uh, I have to say, uh, uh, the synths, because it is always, uh, something to discover. What I discovered was that oh, it's always something new to discover. They have all, they had all these elements, mm -hmm. but I have to say, I think I have a suspicion that it also had a lot 
to say about you know earlier days. Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 had uh, Alan Wilder mm-hmm. there, which is this uh, to me the Saint Guru. Yeah. <laughs> or not the Saint Guru. And also, in earlier that you had this uh, what is his name again? Om Og Magara. So this I should remember. But the very uh, first Dipesh Modus is brilliant also. But then you have. Um, I think it's the guy that went to Erasure or something like that. Okay. I don't know the You name. have at least some members that was in the beginning also that is brilliant also, but like the, it was really the synth uh, mm-hmm. things, all the layers, all the original uh, sounds they had. Mm-hmm. But of course, also the the melody, melodies are brilliant and David Gahan sings wonderfully. So mm-hmm. I guess I can cook it down to everything, but... <laughs> They had their uh, totally uh, well, everything was melancholic. Yep, a bit sad. Yeah, but and, um, you know, I've I actually already have my review written for your album, and that is just the 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 word that keeps coming back to me is just like melancholy. Uh, it's just that is just the adjective that just reaches out and grabs me, and it's like that is this album. So that ma- that makes a lot of sense hearing you say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and Royule, the synth player, we, we are a duo, mm-hmm. really. And so we, yeah. are, we are a duo. And he, uh, we have the same background in synths. And so we mm-hmm. have the same kind of music, uh, what we uh, have grown up to and what we have been listening to music. So we have uh, this bond. Me and him has just been sending things to each other during the corona times on this yeah. album. Yes. So that's kind of how this was created. So, yeah, it's... it's uh, uh, it's fun to hear that you um, you have heard the melancholy in the album. Oh, I mean, I'm I'm a sucker for that. Like, no matter the genre, I love melancholy yeah. in music. You know, uh, my other favorite, one of my other favorite uh, Nordic composers is Alifer Arnolds. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, he. Oh, I have to hear. No, that's a don't happen to. I have to hear it. What did you call it? Oliver? Uh, I might be mispronouncing it. Alifer Arnolds. Uh, he he did albums for now. I am winter. Um, he he's been at like the Grammys and everything. But I'll send it to you. But very similar yeah, vibes. Yeah, please send it. Please, please send it because uh, maybe uh, if if he has been to ra- I never listened to radio and stuff. So mm-hmm. maybe that's why I haven't heard him. But I will listen to to. I will would, check him you out. You would love him. Yeah. So that's what that's what reaches out to me about it. So we, we will we will talk about that. But we've got a whole gap between. So the last time you're talking about uh, when you were eight. Uh, I would love to hear about, do, you know, during your formative years as a teenager, uh, what what mm. music, what kind of music, or what role did music play in your your life as you sort of went through, you know, your teenage years into early adulthood? Yeah, first of all, I listened to, to this uh, Black Celebration or album almost all the time. Yep. <laughs> so I can listen to the things over and over again if it's something like. But I also had other, you know, you had. Um, you know, then later in teenager prodigy came, for example, mm-hmm. and that was also a uh, you know with the poison that song that is called uh, poison is absolutely brilliant. Yep. That was, uh, and you had also this eighties, uh, uh, what you can you call it, like alternative music. Yeah, that's a, a an ocean of good stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Cure, and of course that can dance, and you had. Uh, uh, cook the twins and everything mm-hmm. so yeah we never I, I never get the chance to to talk about this kind of music here on this channel so oh. i'm just so happy that that now you know i've got some different perspectives coming in on, on you know different different musical influences and so you were pretty much listening to alternative uh all throughout your your teenage years yeah it was all alternative and i had also you know i got the what do you call it Altered Images was a band, an 80s uh, English band that I was very fond of. That is a little bit pop punkish thing. Okay. And the, and the vocalist sounds like she's a little girl. It's absolutely brilliant. It's punk together with a girlish. Now it's fantastic. So that I discovered as a first, I think it maybe was the first vinyl I bought. And it was a vinyl <laughs> based solely because of the cover. So it's a mm-hmm. birthday party on, on the on the cover of that uh, vinyl, and um, that was when I moved to town when I was sixteen to to go to art school and stuff. So, so then you had this, um, yeah, altered images. 
and uh what else no it was like everything that was kind of it's a it's a lot of things that could uh, yet even the smiths i look mm -hmm. and, and yeah Björk came of course in that with the first album fantastic mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> amazing so, so I, I remember reading that you sang in a punk band yes uh, yeah and uh, you're talking about going to art school and so I'm starting to see that maybe on the horizon, you know, usually when someone goes to art school, it's not too long before they're in a punk band. So uh, did, yeah. it, was that around? Was that, was that around the same time? Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> around the same time, they didn't go to the school actually. Okay. But I met them on the bus. On a, on my way to visit my father out in this uh, island where I'm living now, he's mm -hmm. living here. And then I met one of these guys in that uh, band on the bus, and he said, "Yeah, I'm." He started to talk with me, and he said, "Yeah, I'm. I'm in a band, but we don't have a vocalist." And I was like, "Oh, I can try." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so that was that your first, first time, time singing? Yeah, I guess it was because. Uh, I was uh, more playing before that, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't sing uh, until I was a bit late. I was uh, very shy when I was little, so I yep. didn't sing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to shorten down that story, it's like that uh, my, my older cousin, which I'm very close to, is like a brother to me. He forced me to sing, actually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he didn't give up on me. Like, he just knew. He told me once. It's very weird because he told me once. I'm not kidding. This is the truth. You know, mm -hmm. he told me he's uh, like nine years old, 10 years older than me. And then he told me, you know, you have to sing. I know, I know you are going to be on, you're going to be on stages around the world when you're older. I just know it. So maybe it was just a coincidence that he has wishful thinking. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad he pushed uh, on with that idea because I am traveling around and yeah. singing. Stage, no, and I love it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I that's was how I to Yeah, I was wondering when singing was going to come into the picture because you've only talked about synthesizers so far, but you are most known for singing. So I was sort of wondering when when that was going to come into the picture. Yeah. So, so so eventually, I like because I also were playing and singing and you know with the synths and stuff. But then on this project with my own, I had the uh, urge to kind of discover how I could do things with only the voice. I wanted to see how that could be mm -hmm. to lay uh, the synths a bit on the side and then to, so I started with this uh, choir, I looked to make choir arrangements and and I started to make just songs with that. So that's how the Seafarer album com came. Oh, that is so because, cool. Yeah, so that's how that came and, and I paired up with because it was supposed to be a cappella album. And if you hear it last, you know, it's just my son is looking at something, he has a headset on, and it's oh, looking it's at good. nothing, he's looking at YouTube. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. <laughs> no, but, uh, um, no, and uh, uh, where was I now? No, I forgot what I talk talked about. Oh, you were talking yeah, about uh, your vocals, uh, your uh, the acapella aspects of, of Island. <laughs> Yes, but then I uh, with the Seafire album, I got uh, bored with the idea that it was going to be just a cappella album. So I mm -hmm. contacted an old friend of mine that is very into, uh, you know, Harpon Larsen, mm -hmm. that is, uh, <clears throat> that used to be my neighbor. So we are, we are having all this fun project with uh, doing things together with synths and vocals. So I just asked him if he could join on that one to see what comes up with you now. But then, uh, then it was another way to work than we are doing now. Then I had I had the melodies that had the choir arrangements and so we just, you know, I said, okay, what can, what can you do here? No, more like that. Oh, that is so cool. And and he's a member of Dayfarna or is he? No, no, he, he is uh, having a studio because that's how Dayfarna came out because mm -hmm. he is so busy with having, a, he's a teacher music teacher and he's also having uh, his own studio to to take care of so he couldn't okay. be with me live you know I had to find someone else to be with me as live but this was right before corona no one knew mm -hmm. that corona was coming right so so then um, I met up uh, I found someone yeah we can be with you on your band you know no problems and we started to rehearse and that is the final that is Hoyula Furland and also 
but posting on drums and um, Ian Turin asked on drums. Uh, and we started just to rehearse, but then we started to make new things there and then, you know. Mm-hmm. Me and me and Roy Ulle just were like, he was playing, I was singing, and just new things came came across. And uh, uh, Ian Turin on drums, he, he recorded it because he has his own studio also where we mm-hmm. were uh, actually rehearsing. So he was just recording us live. So we we instead of uh, rehearsing on uh, the Seafair album, we made new things. Okay. So then I just asked them, okay, what about maybe we should be a band? <laughs> like, <laughs> a, so that's uh, yeah, that's how that come because it would be ridiculous at that point. It would be ridiculous to create something with them and then call it a new Lindify album. Yeah. Because yep. then you are actually a team from the first. Uh, we are creating things together from the scratch. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you clarified what Dave Farna is because I, re- mm-hmm. I I know a lot of people think Dave Farna is a person, and and everyone's. Yeah. So I'm so glad that you have the chance to clarify Dave Farna is is a duo yes. of musicians who who work. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a because. Uh, um, and this is a practical thing because yeah. uh, it is basically uh, Royal and and, and uh, mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but then we also because the foreign uh, um, actually means on our di- dialect it means uh, those who uh, are gone, those who are gone. And that is like because we sometimes have guests and sometimes they are not there and then they are there again and uh, like we have this very floating of who can sometimes be with us. You know, on stage or on guests, but but the, so then it suits with the Farna, you know, yeah, those who are gone. Yeah, that's poetic. I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, so uh, uh, yeah, we found out that that was an issue, and the only reason why uh, Linify Hala is still there as a additional and the Farna, that is uh, because. Uh, my record company or our record company said that uh, I tried to talk them out of it. I tried to say, can we just have the phone and all, please? Like, we are a band. No, but no, people know your name from the first album. Yeah. So that we had, okay, but then uh, we have to have something extra. And so that, okay, so call yourself that then, like, in Fajala and the Fauna. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I had a feeling it was something about, like, promotion and marketing that would that would yes, go into it because you, you, right. know, you do have you do have a name that people know immediately right uh if they're in the nordic music scene they're usually very familiar with your name so <laughs> yeah and i'm not a business business person one bit so i had no idea that uh, you know <laughs> that, uh, that that would be a good thing to just keep it but uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so so seafarer seafarer was your first album Yes, yes, but uh, I've made a lot of music together with also the, that has just not been released mm-hmm. yet. So I've always Ooh. like uh, done a lot of different things, really. Yeah. Are you gonna release that someday, maybe? Yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that'd be so cool. So, so you go from Seafair into Hildring, yeah. 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 So, what did you sort of was there anything going from Seafair to Hildring um, that you wanted to do? differently or that that sort of like in inspired you differently or you know i guess the question i'm asking is what did what do you think you learned going from seafarer into hildring or what did you want to do differently yeah i wanted uh wanted to to make it a bit darker in the sound okay. a bit darker that was mm-hmm. what i was thinking on the next album i was to want to do even make the synth things a bit you know yep even darker yeah <laughs> because um yeah, you know, I have this thing with Depeche Mode and the old mm-hmm. things there. And and also, uh, I think that has been a process between also me and uh, Ole that we we want to, to just emphasize this, uh, uh, you know, when the synth things gets very, like, drony and experimental mm-hmm. and almost noisy, noisy sometimes. Yeah. And and also with in big part of that also to help us with getting there is uh, of course also um, producer Eva Sunday, 
Okay. Uh, that we want to, because when we have made all the songs and stuff, we have uh, gone to his studio and done some things that we maybe recorded again. And he has microphones, for example, that uh, is uh, one microphone that he likes to use. Uh, that is very, uh, it's very old. It's okay. from Germany. It's Germany. It's very old. And that can't handle, if I'm yelling out the word, <laughs> It can't really handle it. It gets a bit distorted yeah. um, naturally, mm-hmm. and that is uh, so. so uh, but it it is very like warm sound. It's something happened if it's very low volume. Mm-hmm. So some of the songs, even uh, even on Hildring, but also on the, especially on the newest album, you can mm-hmm. probably hear it. That some things, it sounds like oh, this is a bit distorted, and that's true. And that's mm-hmm. the, because you use this microphone. It's not a, it's 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 not a trick, you know. Afterwards or something. Yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. So I, before before we we start talking about uh, Islet, uh, finally, I would love I would love to sort of hear more about, um, because we kind of we kind of rushed over it just because I'm so excited to talk about the, the music. But uh, when you're developing this relationship with singing. Um, mm. sort of like what was that journey like for you at first? Because I'm so interested in this in this fact that you very much started with very synth synthesizer brain. You're like, I love synthesizers, and then all of a sudden you're shoved into a punk band, and you yeah. just you just sing. Um, but you know, it, it's it's been a while, and I'm I I'm sort of curious what the the journey for you has been like as a singer, uh, considering that's such a big part of what you do now. Yes, it's it's. Uh, I'm very happy that I started out with the synths and so because also like it has, since you are interested in the synths, I can say that this uh, bit ninety bit ninety nine mm-hmm. that I have. Uh, it's also like um, you have you have all these filters you can, but you have manual. You have like this knots, not you can't do like this. You have to manually like. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so that's kind of you know, and what I discovered then when I was sitting there as a, a girl. It like really programming this mm-hmm. stuff, and, and that like the I could change the sounds okay. in the synthesizer, and that was uh very fun to do, you know, the filter you could, and and then I I, I think I've just been applying that for the voice that mm-hmm. idea that you can actually use <laughs> the voice, yeah, with the filters, but you have it internally, this you know, is so you cool, <laughs> yeah, but it's like you you know you have filter and it's like and like this uh. uh make the sound sharp mm-hmm. and you can also like uh, the opposite or you just sustain sustain the sound and you can have this very staccato and i was mm-hmm. just all these things just thinking of it uh just applying it uh, to the voice instead oh, that is so, so neat. i've never heard anyone talk about the voice like a synthesizer before <laughs> yeah no no it's uh it's just something that um uh yeah, it's been more. What can I say? It's it's been more important to me, uh, for me personal to have the ability to be a bit flexible in the voice, mm-hmm. also, than to sound beautiful. Yeah, that, it's, it's mean, not so important to me to sound uh, sound necessarily beautiful. That's actually uh, what what really grips me about your music. You know, I'll, I'll use the phrase avant garde. Uh, yeah, I, I would yeah. say I would very much say, especially when you said that you wanted Hildring to be darker. I noticed that mm. Hildring was also a little bit more avant garde. Um, yeah, and so I I've just noticed that you have that approach. Um, and that's an approach to music that I think has sort of uh, been undervalued uh, lately. Uh, you know, the, the under the uh, <laughs> the original composers in the earliest twentieth century, like Schoenberg and Stravinsky, they were very much mm. into this idea that beauty is not the only mark of good music um yeah, yeah and and but ever since then it sort of fell out of fashion because no one was listening to it but i think yeah. that that is a very i think that's a needed approach that a lot of people forget about that music doesn't have to be just beautiful or it's not good it there's mm. so much breathing room that music can have as an art form and it, it it's making a lot of sense to me that that you approach it that way that it's an art. It's playing with synthesizer settings. It's using sound as art. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a way for expression. Mm-hmm. And I think it's uh, also, yeah, so like, for example, lyrics, because the lyrics are always right after 
mm-hmm. I'll make the melodies, not before, because okay. I want it, because I want the melody to be totally free. You know? mm-hmm. And also, if there are some guests, I have my, sometimes my um, my cousin is guest on both Heldring and the new album mm-hmm. on uh, one uh, one lyric, you know, at okay. least like one lyric, and. That is also I just adjust the lyrics after what I've been singing. But the thing is that that is also like to to keep the music totally free. Yeah. But that is just maybe someone would feel more free if they see the words before, but not me. You know, I mm-hmm. I want to totally like what uh, what whatever comes out <laughs> from the mouth, <laughs> and then uh, the words have to fit that. And sometimes it's not uh, words uh, at all. Yeah, I noticed, but it. It's so interesting to me that you're saying that because I would have assumed, um, I would have assumed that you wrote the lyrics first, uh, just because of how of how. It's not very, you know. Usually, when someone writes the verse first, uh, or or the chorus first, it's very every time you sing a line, it's sung very similarly. There's like this repetition to it, but you have <laughs> this very free form way of singing that reminds me of earlier like classical composite like art song where they had the poem first and then they would let the words dictate what the melody did um and that's kind of how your music sounds to me so i'm i'm actually shocked that the lyrics come next oh yeah <laughs> yeah no but okay maybe then the explanation maybe is because when i listen to deepesh mode for all those years <laughs> I was uh, I was uh, singing along not with uh, not with David Gahan's uh, melody mm-hmm. because I wanted him I wanted to hear him of course and that's my, but I was singing along with the synths so I was singing between the synths and like adding some stuff sometimes you know mm-hmm. uh, and I had a since I was listening to that Black Celebration album for many years <laughs> I think that just. Uh, yeah, the melody it it went it got new melodies into the songs. Okay, into their songs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but only in my uh, in only on the girl room, of course. So, but <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's it's just been. But then I had words to it. I was just singing mm-hmm. along with uh, instruments and uh, doing harmonies. So maybe that's why it's just been a. Uh, it's natural for me to make uh, the melodies first. Yeah, no, that and that you know that makes a lot of sense. I'm, I wish I could be that way. I'm very, I'm very harmony driven in everything I do. I, I have a lot of trouble focusing on melody first. So th- mm. this is, uh, so I always uh, admire uh, those who can just sort of let a melody just flow out of their head. <laughs> so uh, that, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I guess we could talk about Islet now. <laughs> um, so with Islet, I will say the very first thing that struck me is when you guys announced the artwork. The artwork Mm -hmm. has been such a huge part of what drew me into that album immediately, where you guys showed the artwork. And I was like, I need to listen to whatever music goes with this. (laughs) Yeah, Um, yes, beautiful. Yeah, so did (laughs) was your approach to the music similar, where you sort of like had this image or aesthetic or or visual theme that sort of drew you know drew you through the music yeah it's uh it's uh actually um uh, the designer she got to s- listen to the music yeah and she said that immediately she got and she didn't know that i had been she actually didn't know that but of course it's called island mm-hmm. but still i was kind of shocked when i saw the imaginary like because it is like in a way how i felt when i was traveling to portugal Mm-hmm. To get the uh, inspiration for lyrics, okay, and then I experienced uh, I uh, experienced uh, a lot of things during that month. <laughs> um, it, it, uh, it was magical, and uh, I went out to the Azores mm-hmm. because I felt that oh, I had to go out there, like uh, further out in the ocean. And then I discovered on, on São Miguel, the biggest island, I, I discovered an islet that were right outside the coast and, and and to me it was a mag it was like a magnet growing me out i had to find a way to go out there in winter time it isn't i was there in winter time out of season and then it's not allowed to go on to the uh, uh islet because of birds uh, yep actually yeah okay so i didn't do that but uh 
I was like, I'm going back there one day to be able to visit because it was like this. Mag- but at, uh, I got shocked when I saw the cover because it reminded me of, of that exact islet somehow. That and then so she cool. had drawn, yeah, and she had been putting all this. She and she 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 said that uh, um, that it she had gotten this kind of ideas right away, mm-hmm. you know, and and then also. You know, there, there is a whale there, which are uh, um, Polish, uh, Alexandra, because or no, I don't, I don't remember the last name, but it is like, um, oh, her name is Alexandra. Yeah, I will make us, I will make a post some uh, soon where the yep. names are like, uh, yeah, because uh, she is, she made a whale in itself, okay. you know, the whale. Yeah. So, um, uh, so but the, the, we are really, really happy with how that cover art, uh, whether because I always, or we, we always make uh, the artist like having the free. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because then that, that always turns out best anyway. Mm-hmm. An so, artist can, when they are not dictated to do this or do that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, honestly, I, a lot of us would assume that your primary uh, inspiration for like the eyelid theme would have come from your background growing up on the west coast of Norway uh so it's honestly pretty cool to hear that most of it actually came from going to Portugal but I'm I'm assuming that you have this because I can see the inspiration throughout all of your music you you clearly have this connection to the sea or to the ocean um and it is probably at its strongest I would say as just a listener it's at its strongest in islet um, so I would love to hear a little bit more about, you know, how exactly, you know, you tried to communicate ocean, sea, water, uh, through the music as you were writing and in the creation process. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fond of mysterious things and everything like, um, uh, that, you know, you can f- feel that there is something and, uh, that, and, and that is very connected. All the elements are always walk. You know, out then looking at stuff, and mm-hmm. and I, I feel uh, both physical and but psychological also very close to the ocean. I tried to live once a place where uh, I was far away from the ocean. I couldn't. I was there for two months. I guess. So, yeah. so it's something. I think it's only but uh, you know, but observations, and it's so uh, to just look at the ocean itself, mm-hmm. look at the waves, look at uh, and then the. the in, in, I start to imagine what is underneath there and what is like, oh, and all the silver on the top of the water when the sun is hitting the water. There is a ton of things. It never ends. Mm-hmm. You know, the, and you have the low low tide and high tide. And uh, and of course, I've been free diving with a mask and like out here in the ocean. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a world of its own, right? Mm-hmm. It's like huge. Uh, forests underneath the uh, of seaweed. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't know. I I don't uh, really have. Uh, uh, the only answer is that I'm very fond of the ocean, and I find yep. it like a never-ending uh, uh, inspiration. But I don't exactly know why. I mean, that makes sense. You know, you know, you, you grow up in that setting. It just becomes a part of you. And it, it, it makes sense to me that you can't exactly pull out an exact answer. Um, and mm-hmm. that's actually kind of what I expected. It, because when you when you grow up in, in these very specific environments, it just starts to sort of influence everything you do. Um, I know, you, you know, you talked about moving to a landlocked space for two months and you couldn't do it. Um, we, yeah, no. we, my, so my wife grew up, on on in florida so she was very close to not only ocean but everglades marsh and she loved it and then she moved to new england uh, where she met me and we were very close to the ocean again i grew up on the chesapeake bay uh in maryland Mm -hmm. uh so i grew up on the water and then two years ago three years ago now we had to move to colorado and i'm still not used to just how little water there is here and i remember telling you that that this album is making me feel like I'm at the ocean again or at some sort of water oh. again. Uh, and so yeah, it, de- it definitely comes through the music. Um, it, it just puts me right back on a beach. 
Uh, that's great. But how long have you? Where in Colorado do you live? Uh, Boulder. Um, yeah, oh, I'm... but yeah, I, I loved it there in Boulder. I loved it there. But I, I can guess it's like diffi very difficult to not see the ocean. Yeah, for us. Oh yeah, it's I've it's beautiful in its own way because I love mountains too. I, I love anywhere that has ocean and mountains. It's why I love Norway. It's why I love New England. They're very very similar. Um, so yes. at least the, the beautiful mountains make up for the lack of of ocean. I think I can. But my wife is still trying to get used to no no beach. She's actually going to Florida at the end of the month to to get oh, her, yeah. Uh, yeah to hang out with family and to sort of get her her dose of ocean so yeah <laughs> so lyrically there was something I, I wanted to ask you about about this album it, it seems like you're focusing on a part of the ocean that maybe goes unnoticed and with a lot of people and that is the ocean's relationship with the moon uh mm -hmm. or or with the stars uh there's a there's so many of your lyrics that the song is mostly about the ocean but you keep also mentioning you know dancing with the moon or under the stars or something like that um so do, do you want to say a little bit more about how you sort of how your love of the ocean and all things sea related uh also sort of bring bring the moon and everything into it when you're writing these lyrics and thinking of these songs yeah it's it's uh again probably because yeah my um interest for the all the mysterious and all the creatures and this and and uh where i grew up uh, i'm living here now where i grew up but uh, mm -hmm. a little bit now i'm like um in a place where it's actually a shop right down the street and like it's a little bit more light not much but mm -hmm. where i grew up it's no it's all it is very few lights along the mm -hmm. road and and so so uh i've been used to walking out also in the evening after dark mm -hmm. and listening to music and stuff. But then, uh, down to the harbor, or down to the, which is a sm very small harbor, old harbor that is like no one is there, really. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I remember, then I was like, then it could be the moon. And uh, and since there's no light pollution, everywhere you could really see it. Yeah. And you can see the stars. And my grandfather also, he told me a lot about the stars. So. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's uh, a spectacular night sky mm -hmm. out there. And uh, and uh, but uh, and some parts of the ocean. If it wasn't the harbor, it was um, uh, down by the um, ocean. Like I have to go through the forest and stuff. But that was not in the night time. Maybe like but but then if it was like in the midsummer. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't really go right. very dark. It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> so then I was done. and and uh, the light there in general in the in the night, if it's like midsummer and you have all this orange mm -hmm. or dark indigo or whatever going on, it's just a fantastic place to be. And it's like all well, if it was people there, was it was only a couple of friends. Yeah. Ah, so, oh, that sounds like paradise. Was, uh, it was. It it is. But to me, it's a uh, paradise and. And then it's you see all the animals, the uh, yeah birds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess the the last the last question I have for you about about Islet is uh is there a song in particular that stands out to you? Maybe not necessarily your favorite because I know it's sort of like asking who your favorite kid is, but in, yeah. in terms of like is there is there a specific track on the album that has stuck around with you or that was uh, especially uh, demanding of your attention? Uh, when you were when you were working on this album, yes, I think uh, actually the Furnash song. This is called Furnash. Mm -hmm. uh, that is because it's a very um, have a lot of feelings connected to yeah. it, and that uh, trusted me a lot. To I, I knew that I had to write something that was very passionate in a way. In yeah. uh, you know, I'm always like writing always in mysterious things, and I, and that comes quite easy, not easy, but you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but that then it. Uh, without really it was very it's a very passionate song yeah and uh, uh, and that was difficult to find the right words but i knew it i knew i had to go out of the comfort zone <laughs> and like because uh yeah the melody was there and and everything mm -hmm. and i knew what it was going to be about yeah so for those for those who haven't heard it um what what exactly 
is it about if you want to give any background or if you just want to not say and leave it a mystery you could do that too <laughs> that one i think i want to leave uh to be a mystery a but feeling. i can say and this this is a very it was very touching to me mm -hmm. because our producer um eva sunday mm -hmm. he had uh played it to a couple of different people and he said that both of these people, I played it for other people also, but this, uh, there were two people that had started to cry when they heard the song. So that is very... Uh... You can make that three right here. Oh. I, <laughs> I'm serious. So many oh, times, yeah. so many times throughout that album, I I was getting emotional. Uh, like a Star, that's my personal favorite. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Some, something about that tune. And then... Uh, yeah, I got emotional several times listening to that album. Um, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, so. but then then you've got some tunes that are like earworms, as what we would say in English, uh, low water. Yes. That that hook yeah. was stuck in my head for a week. I could not, yeah. I could not get it out of my head. <laughs> yeah, that is one of my, if you can say, it, because it is difficult to say, like, but the, the, the low water is also the one of the songs that is close to me. Yeah. Everything oh, I, is, as I you can say, tell. but it's like, yeah, <laughs> it definitely comes oh. through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I would love to hear sort of um, maybe what's coming next for for you guys. Are are you maybe going to do sure. a tour of some sort for the album? Maybe it's come been, to the states. It's been working. It's been working on it. The the brilliant uh, Melanie and them at um, Isa Music Management is. Yeah. Uh, on the case so uh, the first thing we will do is actually tomorrow we will travel to cyprus oh right for yeah. yeah so we have been invited we are so happy about that so we are going to from ice cold norway to uh 100 batting temperatures <laughs> and um we are having we're really looking forward to it so we are traveling tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, for our first concert with this album and then uh, of course we're including uh songs from every album Mm -hmm. but uh, also from the newest one and then uh, there are but I can't reveal exactly I don't want to reveal it before, before yeah, I yeah. know the exact dates mm -hmm. and exact when but there will absolutely be more concerts oh that'd be so cool because you know I know it's a long shot I would love to see you here in the states but uh, I guess I will I will wait until maybe some opportunity to see you uh, maybe sometime in Europe but you, you never know it would be so cool yeah, yeah, I really that hope that we could, that would be awesome, you know. But it's uh, it's it is the working visa that can be it's a so expensive, and it, I feel so bad because you know I I talk to, to musicians across all genres that are all have the same answer, right? It's just that working visa is just such a killer. Um, yeah, and I don't know what to do about it on my end. I've tried to vote. I don't even know what that does with a working visa, but like it's it's so difficult. Um, but I understand. I understand. Yeah, but we will absolutely. We have been invited, and I would love to do it. So, so mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully one day. Yeah, and you let me know if there's anything I can do on my end to help get you to Colorado, because you know we we've got a Nordic studies program here. We we've got Nordic oh, musicians. No. We would we would love to have you. <laughs> that would be amazing, and actually, it's probably that is actually maybe a. Maybe that I think I since you were mentioning it, I think I heard rumors that that is actually a, like the you can get away with it if it's like a, oh it's a um, cultural kind of heritage thing. Maybe I can help you get away with it. I would love to. That would be <laughs> fantastic. Although we have this synth music that is made, but it's it's a it's the mythic. It's a myth. It's it is actually a, the lyrics is very connected to the mythical words world yep. here. So yeah, that I mean, way, <laughs> yeah, I can. You know, if there's if there's anything that I love doing, it is deceiving my own government. So I would love, I would love <laughs> to do what I can to to get you over here because, uh, yeah, we need we need more, you know, foreign artists. It's sort of it, it's good for any country to have people from other places come to play music. So, absolutely, same here. I, I get thrilled every time there is some something going on. You know. That yeah. people are coming from from the outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just it's just good. It's good for everyone. So, so Lindy, is there is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that we didn't we didn't get to hit on? 
now I can just a tiny bit I want to add. Yeah. We have the guest musicians this time on the uh, island. Yep. It's Jon Stenersen on uh, he has this uh, uh, traditional string instruments. Mm-hmm. So people when whenever we have guests they are uh, we say you can use your chosen instrument. So yeah. he has that uh, and uh, and then we have um, Sondre Velan on drums. Awesome. Uh, the additional, additional drums and then we have uh, of course the producer Eva Sunday mm-hmm. or some additional synths here and there. And then uh, also Jürgen Tran on uh, additional synths, like on one of the songs. So there you are. There, I just had to play that. <laughs> when that when 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 Jun's Nickel Harpa came in, I knew it was him. I knew it was yeah. him immediately when I I just started laughing. I was like, there he is. I knew he was going to yeah, show up I, at some point. It's, it's it's such a beauty. He has such a unique style, and it's mm-hmm. so beautiful. So I'm very happy. He actually asked if he could. Could join. I'm very happy about that because it's like we were thinking about that it would only be a, a electronical album because mm-hmm. we have been sending things to each other and we wanted to keep it yeah. like a bit aloof and mm-hmm. cold. And but then actually, and I'm very happy that they did that. The Jun, oh, can I? Maybe I can play on this this album. Can I do that? And I, and I couldn't say no. I was like, oh. Yeah, sure. You, you just send me, just send us uh, your IDs and we can see, like, you listen to the stuff. And, and we're so happy that they did because it's, yeah. it really, really fits. It, I mean, in a way that I don't know if this is a very American thing to say, but it's just like the, the nickel harpa sounds so cold and aloof. Yeah to me so it 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 just sounds it sounds like (laughs) a scandinavian coastline to me um yeah and so if you were to include any instrument it would be that one so i'm glad you included it because it also validated the fact that i feel that way uh that it sounds like the ocean so (laughs) yeah yeah and you also had the hurdy-gurdy on uh on um Mm -hmm. uh you know on uh Dark waters. It sounds yep. like a bagpipe, but yeah. this place is better. It sounds like a bagpipe. I it's thought it like, was a bagpipe. No, it is this. No. Is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this <is> tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like he he is really using those instruments of his in a, such a unique way mm-hmm. that it's like uh, yeah, we are really happy about. It. So yeah, watch- I had to add that. Huh? Are you going to be watching him on Eurovision? Of course, I have of to. <laughs> I have to. It's you, and after all, I have to. Uh, yeah. He, the, I, I'm biased, of course. I think they're gonna Me win. Too. I, I think yeah. they're gonna win. It's gonna be so good. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Just... I, I also, I, I also absolutely think they are going to win. That's. Uh, I actually made a, a, I made a bet with you. Okay. I said. Uh, <laughs> I told him that if you are not winning, because I'm a, I will cook my, uh, you know, stockings and eat them. <laughs> it's just, I just not... my my wife has never really listened to Gota. Uh, I've I've never really showed them to her, and then she she fell in love with Yoon when we were hanging out with you guys in Denver. She spent most of the night talking to Yoon and Ilif, uh, and she uh, yeah. just all she remembers is the hair. She's the yeah. guy with the hair. And <laughs> yes. I remember she she watched, you know, the, the clip came up on Instagram of them playing and she shows it to me, goes, is this, is this the guy we talked to? He has the same hair. And I said, yeah, that's him. Uh, and, and she's been listening to Ulvaham on repeat for the last two months. So it worked. I think, I think they're going to win. <laughs> I think so too. And it's a great song, actually. Like, uh, oh, yeah, so it's good. a really great song. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing them at a at Migar's Bloat. That's just going to be such a such a cool experience too. So, <laughs> of course. so Lindy, uh, I guess this might be a might be a redundant question at this point, but uh, if people want to learn more about you, if people want to find you online, where can they do so? Uh, I am uh, for most parts uh, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not that uh, fancy, so I'm not uh, everywhere. Uh, like I have a Facebook account and blah blah blah, but I mm-hmm. never use it. As, yeah. you know, I have something. So, so Instagram is where I'm actually just posting some of this personal stuff and just mm-hmm. from daily life. And but if they want to know more about the music, I guess it's like things will come along yeah. the way. You know, there. 
there are articles out there, but uh, mm -hmm. I haven't really checked. But I guess like Google Lindify Holland, I found and it will come up yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So anyway, I just I just hope that as many people listening as as possible give that album a shot. Uh, I've got I've got the CD on the way. It was just I needed to have that artwork in person. Oh yes. Uh, so I just nice. I just Thank hope you. that I hope that people are listening to that album because it is just such a special experience. Uh, and, and I I mean that it's just such a I love it. I love it dearly. So. Oh, <laughs> so. you. That's nice to hear. Yeah, so Lindy Faye, thank you so much for the music you make. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking a little bit more about uh, your background, your your approach to the album and everything. Uh, it's been a real delight yes. having you on, and uh, I look forward to the next time we get to chat about your music, all right? Yes, same here. All right, cool. You take care. I'll, I'll talk thank to you, you later. Yes, talk to you later. Right, bye. bye.